let's go on to our first question. We selected specifically with problems. We want to help you guys understand how do you work with questions that involve words a lot. And these come from a topic such as financial mathematics, topics such as probability. So those are the ones that we're going to be focusing more on, including something awesome that we called fundamental counting principle. It's called FCP in short. Can't wait to do it with you guys. Let's get started. All right, um, this is actually question 10 of this paper. Um, and the question reads as follows. It says, in a certain country, 10 digit telephone numbers with the following format were introduced. You will see we've got a nice table, the format. All right, and then um, there's a number of digits and there's an example. So the format has got three parts. The first part is the area code, all right? The second part is the exchange code, and the third part is a number. You will notice that in total, each telephone number will have 10 digits, right? So all area codes will have three digits in them, like in this example, 901, and then the exchange code will have three digits in it, which is 544 in this example, and then the last number will have four digits, which is 1230, which means the telephone number appearing in this example, if you wanted to call whoever, owns this telephone number, it will be 901 as the code, it will be 544, and then at the end it's going to be 1230. So this is basically the format that is used for telephone numbers in this selected country. All right. Now, there's an important statement that is um, put here. They're telling us that the digits may be repeated, which means if one of the digits in this list is a 9, for example, you are allowed to repeat it. And I'm sure you can already see that the this example we have here is repeating some of these digits, which means, for example, 4 appears twice. It's repeated. 1 appears here as well, and it also happens to appear there. So this actually tells you that digits may be repeated, so you're allowed to repeat digits. There are questions that do not allow you to repeat digits, which means if you've used a number in the list of digits that are provided, you cannot use it again. And that is not the case in our example. All right, cool. So 10.1 reads, how many possible 10-digit telephone numbers could be formed? How many possible 10-digit numbers could be formed? All right, so how do you actually do this? You firstly have to understand that we've got the code, right? We've got the code, the area code. Okay, the area code is going to be one of the uh, numbers that we're going to have here. And then we're going to have the exchange code, right? And then lastly, we're going to have the actual number, all right? Now, when you're creating the area code, how many digits are allowed? You're allowed to use three digits. So I'm gonna leave three spaces to show that I actually need to choose um, three digits from a list of all the digits that we have. Remember, in our number system, we have 10 digits in total, not nine, but we've got 10 digits. Zero is also one of the digits. So if you're counting from one, to nine, you'll get nine digits, but zero makes it 10 digits in total. So we've got 10 digits that you can always select from when you're looking for a particular digit to create the area code, very important. Okay, so now I'm coming here to try and build my area code. As I come and attempt to build my area code, there's one question I keep asking myself. In order to build my area code, how many digits can I pick from to select the digits to put in this position, right? There are 10 digits that are available that you can choose from in total, right? So then, then that means we're going to have here um, a value of 10. So you're going to have 10, right, times. For the second digit to decide how many, um, what digit to put here, I can choose any digit from the 10 digits that are available. I can put a 1 or a 9 or a 0, all the way from 0 up to 9. All those 10 digits are available as a choice to decide what I'm putting as my second digit for the area code. And the same applies for the third digit. If I'm deciding what to put as a third digit of my error code, they did not specify any restrictions, so I've got 10 things that I can choose from. Very important. And then when you come in to decide what my exchange code is going to be, again, we were told that we've got three things that we can choose from. I mean, it has to be three digits, right? It has to be three digits. And to decide what digit I'm using in the first place, in the second place, or the third place, it looks like I always have 10 options that I can choose from. That's why this is 10 times 10 times 10. The 10 symbolizes all possible combinations that I can pick from, all possible digits that I can choose from. There's 10 that are available, then it's going to be 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, lastly, we have got the number that you put at the end. We're told that the number must have four digits. So one, two, three, four, all right? It must have four digits. What are my options or what can I choose from? 
to decide what I'm putting here as the first number. I've got 10 things I can choose from, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 9. So I've got 10 options here. I also have 10 options here. I also have 10 options here. I'll actually always have 10 options to choose from because I'm allowed to choose from 10 digits what digit I want to use for creating this number. So in total, we can claim that all possible uh, phone numbers that you can actually allocate in this case will be 10 times 10 times 10. And there's three tens here, and there's actually um, four tens here. So in total, you've got 10 to the power of 10 telephone numbers that you can allocate to um, this to the telephone number system of this country. So 10 telephone numbers that you can actually uh, allocate. 10 to the power 10. Sometimes you might want to write that 10 to the power 10. It's just one with 10 zeros. 10, okay, to the power of um, 10 will be a number with, uh, it's one times 10 to the power 10, so it's actually one with uh, 10 zeros. Very important. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the second question. Um, the second question says, the certain, certain restrictions were placed on uh, the groups of digits. Now, going back to those groups, we are now going to put restrictions. Okay, very important. Okay, cool. Number one, we're told that the area code must be three digits. So it is still three digits. Okay, it must be three digits. And the first digits cannot be a zero or a one. So very important. But these ones are exceptions. You can have anything in the first position, but it cannot be a zero or a one. Very important. The second bullet point says the exchange code must also be three digits. We are happy to hear that. We're still maintaining our three-digit system. However, the first digit and the second digit cannot be a zero or a one. Now, there are two things that they're restricting there, so please be careful of that. It's first as well as second. The last bullet point says the number must be four digits and the first digit must be a zero or a one. Okay, a zero or a one. Okay, cool. Now let's go back and try and see how this is actually going to pan out. First bullet point, we're gonna analyze this. Because the question says in 10.2.1, how many valid 10 digit telephone numbers could be formed by applying the given restriction? So remember what we have. We've got the area code. Okay, we're going to have some restrictions under that, all right? And then secondly, we've got the exchange code. Okay, the exchange code also has its own restrictions. And lastly, we've got the numbers, right? The number also has its own restrictions. Let's discuss the number of digits that you can have in each one of these places. They said to us in the first bullet point, you're still allowed to take three digits, okay? However, the first digit cannot be a zero or a one. That means, remember, we had 10 possibilities we could pick from, right? Out of those 10, we are told not to use a zero or a one, that leaves us with only eight options to pick from, all right, for the first uh, digit. Right. The first digit, which is the digit that you would put here, far left, can be anything except a zero and one. So that will then mean that you've got eight digits that you can choose from because two of them fall off. However, nothing was said about the second digit and the third digit of the area code. So it means since I'm allowed to repeat this digit, I can still choose from 10 here, and I can also still choose from 10 here because the second and the third digit of the area code has no restrictions. The second bullet point talks to us about the exchange code. The exchange code needs to have three digits as well. There are restrictions that they are put here. What restrictions are these? Well, they're telling us that the first and the second. So there's something here and there's also something there. The first and the second digit cannot be a zero or a one. Again, it means we are canceling out two options out of the 10 possible. That means you are left with eight things to choose from because if you're scrapping up the zero and a one, you're left with eight things that you can choose from. That means the first, since they said the first and the second, it means this can only be done in eight ways. Even this can only be done in eight ways. However, there's nothing they said about the third digit of the exchange code, so that can be done in 10 possible ways because we've got 10 digits that you can choose from. The last one is about the um, uh, given restrictions for the number. The number takes four digits according to this story, okay? And then they're saying to us, the number must be four digits and the first digit must, it must be. The first digit must be a zero or a one. So they're giving you two options that you need to put in the first position here. So that can be done in how many ways? In two possible ways. There's nothing else you can put there. It's either you put a zero or you put a one because I said it must be one of those two. However, 
nothing was said about the second digit, nothing about the third, and nothing about the last. So you always have 10 things that you can choose from to decide what you're going to put there. And then from here, you will see that now, how many valid 10 digit telephone codes, so the valid codes um, will be equal to eight times 10 times 10 times eight times eight times 10 times two times 10 times. So it's basically eight to the power of three because I see there's eight threes here times there's a two here also times tens. How many tens do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six of them in total. This simplifies to what? You just call your calculator and you try to work out the value of that. It's eight to the power of three, okay? Multiply that by two and then multiply the result by 10 to the power of six. What do you end up with? Well, you end up with 10, 24 million. So that's a billion and 24 million. So it's one, zero, two, four. 1, 0, 2, 4, and 6 zeros. 3, 4, 5, 6. That's a billion and 24 million. So those are the total number of valid um, telephone numbers that you can actually have. Okay, cool. The last question says, which is question 10.2, determine the probability that any randomly chosen 10-digit telephone number would be a valid phone number. So what is the key word in this question? The key word in this question is the word probability. How do you work out probability? Well, probability is very simple. The probability of getting a valid number, okay, will all will be the number of all valid telephone numbers, all ones that are valid, divided by the total number of the sample space when there is no restriction. It's important for you to acknowledge the fact that the number that you put here is a number that you will use when we are dealing with the restrictions. The ones that are valid are the ones that are restricted. Restrictions, okay? But what you would have on the denominator will always be the total number of all possibilities when there are no restrictions, right? This is the total. Total possible, okay? Will always come as the denominator when you're working out the probability. Okay, cool. So now let's discuss what happened there. Well, we know that if we are dealing with um, valid numbers, we've got the ones that we just found in question 10.2.1. That means our numerator for this probability calculation will just simply be equal to 1, 0, 2, 4, and those 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. We need to divide that by 10 to the power of 10 because this is the answer we got when there were no restrictions in our first question. And the answer amounts to something awesome. So let's see, you've got that number there. It's still 10, uh, 24 million. Okay, we divide the answer by a simple number, which is 10 raised to the power of 10. And then if you close the bracket there, you simply end up with an answer of uh, exactly 0 0.1024. So the answer is 0 0.1024. This is the probability. So we need to, to actually express this to two decimal places because we always want our numbers to be in two decimal places. So the valid solution will be uh, 0 0.10. This will be the probability. Okay.